The beginning of the book is crucial both for the reader and the writer. You know, people have short attention spans. You want them to keep reading your book. You don't want them to put it down. So you have to hook them quite quickly. So I tend to write a first chapter, park it for a while, think about it, go back and rewrite that first chapter a couple of times until I found just the voice I want to write in and who this character is and where it's going. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So you have all the bits there, but they're not quite in the right place. <laughs> so you have to kind of pick them all up again and make them fit the proper jigsaw puzzle. My editor, every time I start a book, would love if I gave him a synopsis. He would love it. There's nothing, it would make him so happy. He would cry, he would weep with joy if he knew what I was doing. But I never do, because I need to discover it as I go. I normally have a, a basic concept um, for the story itself. For the young adult stories, it'll be a concept. For the younger kids, it might be more the character, actually because one good character can create loads of different situations with a young kid's story. You know, you will hear a lot that from writers that there's a certain point in every book, in every script, in every whatever, where the characters take over. I listen to my character and I watch my character. And I remember I did a book about World War II and this girl called Sophie. And then I realized she was actually humming and singing. And then I said, where are you humming and singing? Tell me. And I realized she was in an air raid shelter. And then next thing, Oh no, we're in World War II. And my characters will always give me the story. You have an idea for a story, you have an idea for a hook or a plot, and you go, what is the either the best character to put into this situation or what is the worst character to put into this situation? If you put an action hero into an action story, it'll be action-packed. If you put a coward into an action story, it'll be, that's drama, that's funny. Uh, the character most unsuited is probably going to give you a lot more reward in the writing of it because from the very start, it's a struggle. Because a lot of my books are set in the past, they are centered around times and places that I'm interested in, that I've read quite a lot about, um, that I know I would like to do some research about. And if I'm going to research, if I'm going to read history books and biographies, then the chances are I'm going to turn it into a story. I like to open the book just before or just during something really interesting or life-changing has happened. If you have, you know, five pages or five chapters leading into when the big scene happens, most people won't read those five chapters. Where if you throw them in literally on page one, um, it's straight away they're into something different and new and they want to turn the next page to see what happens. I always write with a computer. Uh, it's clearer, cleaner, I have terrible handwriting. Um, yeah, I, I just, I like seeing it. I, I, I like seeing it so clean. I like being able to rearrange it. I generally do about 10, 11, 12 drafts maybe. Um, each one getting, you know, less there's less to do each time. I print it out with big gaps between every line, so there's only maybe six or seven lines on a page. And then I scrawl all over that, you know, make loads and loads and loads of changes, put new things in, take things out. I feed all those changes back into the computer, print it out, and do this over and over and over until I print one out that I have nothing left to do. You write how you write, and it's the idea. It's not the physical word on paper. It's you're putting the words down. That's what's important. Really give time to thinking of what you want to write about. And you don't have to start at the beginning. In one way, the blank page is the most exciting, wonderful thing that can happen to your writer. To be confronted with a blank page in a pad or a book is just fantastic, because you're saying, oh, I'm going to fill that. I'm going to put something on that. I know what I'm going to put on it. But in another way, it can be very scary. Don't put the stumbling block of how to start. What are the magic words to start? Don't put that stumbling block in front of yourself. Just jump in. It's like, you know, the side of a big swimming pool or the sea. You know, you say, oh, how will I get in? And when I do this, the best thing is absolutely just jump in. And that's the exact same thing with writing. Just jump in and don't be worrying about the rest of it. Just jump in. And once you're in then, you kind of basically have to swim. You're in there now. You're on the page. Get going. And are you going backwards? Are you going forwards? What stroke are you doing? That's your own decision. But jump in. <laughs>